was walking along the other day, minding my own business, scrolling through social media, when all of a sudden, I got the notification that my new Mac Studio M2 Max had arrived. Naturally, as one does, I completely changed path, ran back home to set it up. Okay, <sighs> all in a day's work. Now, let's jump right Wait. into, we gotta back up. Talk about specs first. Okay, fine. Let's start by getting into the specs. I got the Mac Studio M2 Max and it has 12 core CPU, up to 38 core GPU, and up to 96 gigabytes of unified memory. I'll put on screen some more stats here that really show the performance that this Mac Studio will bring. I was super excited to get my hands on it. I mean, hence me running back there. And some of these stats are really wild when you think of it from 1.8 times faster CPU performance, 3.6 times faster GPU performance, and 4.4 times faster machine learning. I mean, you gotta have something around machine learning or AI in there. On the front, it has two USB-C ports and also two one SDXC. And on the back, we have a lot more going on. We have four Thunderbolt 4, we have one 10 gigabyte ethernet, two USB-As, one HDMI, and also two 1.35 millimeter headphone jack. Not to mention, I gotta say, I just love how this looks. It looks so chic when you walk into my office. I feel like it's just very clean and modern and fresh. I don't know, what do you think? I'll, I'll insert some more footage of it here. You gotta back up again. Dive into freeform. Tell me, I want you to do something complex with it. Let's do what happens when you type a URL into a browser. All right, fine, let's get into freeform. Actually, you know what I'm gonna build with using Freeform is I use it a lot to build diagrams for system design. I am a huge system design nerd. I love understanding how systems are built. I am by no means an expert, but I'm just obsessed with it. And I think it's from my software developer background is understanding, okay, the full picture. And this is something that I find super helpful is not only be able to see a graph, but create one, um, make that diagram, because then you're actually, you're the one creating it, if that makes sense. All right, all in a day's work. This was a very, a very intense example, but I I'm, I just think it's a really cool example for both technical and non-technical people to know what goes on. All right, so let's dive into this freeform diagram here of what happens when a user types a URL into a browser. So first, of course, the user types in the URL of the website they want to visit. The browser then checks the cache. It will first check the cache to see if it's already has a record of the IP address for the requested URL. This in turn will make it do less work if it exists. Then, if the IP address is not in the cache, the browser performs a DNS lookup to find the IP address of the server that hosts the website. You can think of DNS or how I really understood it as a phone book almost. It's not really that, but it's a way of looking up different addresses and that's why I always relate it back to a phone book. Maybe that makes me sound really old. Do you remember phone books, like the physical ones? I remember getting phone books delivered to my house growing up. I think I'm aging myself here. Then the browser will send the HTTP request. Once the browser has the IP address, it can send this request to the server. The server then will process this request. It receives the HTTP request, processes it, and sends it back a response. Then in a matter of what feels like seconds, or it is seconds, the browser will render the web page. The browser receives the HTTP response from the server, which includes HTML, CSS, JavaScript files, all the things that we work on. And the browser will render the page and display it to the user. So much going on, but then the end user just takes it all for granted, as they should. It should be a seamless experience. Kind of like this Apple computer. Wait, 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 wait. You gotta back up for a sec here. We need to talk about this. Oh, you mean my studio displays? That is a chef's kiss. I am obsessed with my studio displays. I get so many compliments on them, not only for how they look, but the quality, the graphics. It's just amazing. And as someone who takes way too many meetings in a day, which, is really unfortunate. It's really handy to have built in this amazing webcam, amazing speakers. I'll, I'll share some of the stats in a second here, but it really helps me. I just, I'm someone who likes everything to look clean and chic and not having to have an external webcam or external speakers, but everything is built in and built in at very high quality. All right, as I promised, let's get into some specs. So we have 27 inch 
5K retina display, 12 MP ultra wide camera with center stage, which is amazing as I am someone I'm sure you know from my videos that moves around a lot and it can follow me and uh, wherever I go. There are three mics, studio quality, three mic array and six speaker sound system with spatial audio. This is just a dream. I absolutely love it when I am doing the creative aspects, whether it be working on content side of things or whether I am building and coding. It just works so well for my entire workflow from beginning to end. Also too, this video would not be complete if I didn't at least touch on the code compiling. So I have on screen here that there is 1.8 times faster code compiling with the Mac Studio M2 Max. All right, I hope you really enjoyed going through this uh, kind of workspace workflow, also too going through some system design around my new Mac Studio. As you know, I mean, you've seen so many videos of mine. I love automating and enhancing my performance when it comes to work. It sounds like I'm an athlete, not a coder. Makes coding sound way too cool. <laughs> I love trying to be as productive as possible when I am working so I can reduce the hours I am working. And we've seen a lot of these videos I create around automating my life with Python or different uh, aspects of my life automating it. And honestly, upgrading to this new Mac Studio for me was an automation in a way, meaning, I don't know if that's the right term, but yeah, we're gonna go with it. Automation meaning it's going to enhance my workflow, it's going to make me more productive, work better and faster. So in turn, it's saving me time. And that to me is absolutely key. Anyways, leave in the comments if there is anything else you want to see about my work setup, about the Mac Studio. You'll see it in a ton of my videos when we're building now. So uh, stay tuned for that. And otherwise, hit the subscribe button, hit this like button, and leave some comments down below because I will respond to every single one of them. You can challenge me on that. Okay, bye everyone.